um, ask Paige about this, and I'm curious what your thoughts are as well. Yeah, obviously you're figuring out what and how you want Paige to be for this team, you know, offensively in particular. I know it's opponent specific, but just more generally, do you feel like you guys are closer to slash found what you want her to be game in, game out in terms of the decision that she's making, the role that she's playing? Um, I, I would say that there are times when it looks like we, um, we have figured out a little more, but it's um, something I've talked about. It's, 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 it's a real struggle to sustain any kind of momentum. You know, Within within a quarter, within the game, you know, we're either we're either having a dynamite quarter where everything is and you know, it looks like we have a handle on what's going on, um, but we're not we're not completely there yet on how to seamlessly incorporate all the other people with the way she wants to play, with the way they want to play, um, and I don't know. When that will be 100 percent like I like it. I think right now we just have to, you know, go with what we've got and hope that every game we can get more contributions from more people. Um, one of the major strengths is making other players better, and. Uh, Right now, that's not happening as much as I would like to see happen. She's making herself better, which is great. But there's not enough flow in our offense where she can make plays for other people. You know, that's not there. And I hope you know, that we can get closer to that. Just the only other thing, um, it's on a different topic, but uh, Tara Vanderveer is seven wins from 1,200 nine from passing coach Patty. You're, I think, the only person who can speak to this, what that magnitude of that number is, and you know, just what it means to be able to coach to that level of success. Um, just if you could take me through what you think that number means specifically you know, in a coaching context. Anybody who uh, is capable of putting up um, those kind of numbers um, has obviously benefited from longevity and being consistent. Um, I, I don't know any coaches that um, that have been able to reach these kinds of milestones. Um, that haven't been incredibly consistent, that there's very little variance from year to year to year to year where you can expect certain things from your team. And I think that's probably the one thing that, um, you know, when you look at Tara's career, you know, Ohio State or Stanford, um, you know, there's a style of play that they have and it hasn't changed. And, and she's been uh, immensely successful. Um, and it obviously is not an easy thing to do, you know, uh, especially in today's day and age and the world that we live in today. So uh, I'm sure she'll be happy when she gets to 1200. I don't think she'll ever see 1300. But uh, that's probably not a good thing. Hey, Gina, good to see you. You've been in this tournament a lot, or the showcase, I think it's the 10th anniversary of it. I don't know what game is strong with six teams that are this good. And just talk about how it's grown in the times that you've been in it, and just how it's I think, good for the sport, having showcases that seems every Sunday of really good basketball teams playing each other. Uh, I could be wrong, but I remember it starting with, you know, we would play a game here 
Then I think it went to, uh, it became two games. And I think it's the first time that it's been six teams. Okay? So it's probably the natural progression of, hey, this is really working, let's keep adding. I don't know where where it goes from there, but everything that the Hall of Fame is trying to do so far has been successful. And the teams that they bring in are incredibly competitive and and certainly today was no different you know, than, than, than the games that were played today. Um, and this early in the season in November, you know, where I don't know the women's basketball um, is at the forefront of people's mind with what's going on, you know, with, through the whole college thing, through the NFL thing. And, and I do believe you have to make some, some statements and some, uh, some splash where people will pay attention right away and remind them that the basketball season's here. I think the guys have been doing it for a long time and they've been doing it very successfully. So I think it's it's appropriate that we follow suit and we, we couldn't do it without the Hall of Fame you know, investing in this, in this event. And the fans obviously are tremendous, they come out. So you gotta pick the right place, you gotta pick the right teams, and they seem to have gotten the right. You know, uh, Paige talked about uh, maybe not putting so much pressure on yourself or maybe not overthinking. And, uh, just getting back to having fun playing basketball. Did, did you talk to her about that, or did you see uh, evidence of that today that she's been a little bit more free and easy out there than she's been? Um, I thought I thought Paige today was a little more uh, vocal, a little more forceful with what she wanted. Uh, because she was more engaged defensively. Um, and she made some big plays defensively. And, and I, I, would, I would like to see her um, not have to, not have to get 25 or 30 every night. Um, but, the reality of the situation is sometimes that's the way it's going to be. Somebody told me uh, yesterday that you know this this could be like our 2014. You know, when we started two freshmen, and D was the only holdover from the previous championship team, and little by little they all started coming along, and it made life easier for for D. But um, there are some days where it's just going to have to be, where she has to do a lot more than, um, than I would want her to have to do, but it's just the way it is. Um, we, we have to find a way to get more people consistently engaged around her. If, if she's not getting enough assists, that means we're not we're not doing a good job moving without the ball because she would find you if we are. And that's been a serious problem for this team for quite some time now. Eden Mossy, Happy Sports. Um, Nika shot the ball well tonight. Just what did you like about her performance and how important will that be going forward? You know, the way people play, uh, the way people play Nika is pretty much uh, try to keep her out of the lane, don't let her create for anybody else. Uh, so they're going to give her those, those shots. And that's part of what I'm talking about. That, that takes a lot of the pressure off uh, off the page or off the, you know, without without Aisy and Caroline you're saying, well, we're, I don't know how many friends we took today, 17. It's not, it's not a good enough number. For, for us, you know, when we made eight of them, I, I think we, we have to spread that around. We have to get more people making those. And she's one of the ones that that I want to take more of them and make more of them. Uh, you know, and, and she has to be a facilitator for 
ball movement. You know, our two our two guards had eleven turnovers today. You know, and so I don't know what that's a force thing. We're forcing things. We're trying too hard. To make things happen, or there's not a there's not the kind of flow that we want yet. And as as that starts to happen, I think there'll be more opportunities for her and KK to get shots up. I know you've talked pretty much all season long about how the defense is going to be up and down, but what did you like from what you saw from them today? I guess second quarter maybe wasn't what you were hoping for, but against a team that's physical like UNC, what did yeah. you like? Yeah, you look at you look at the, our season and you look at the, the quarters breakdown, and there's no round, there's no consistency to it. It looks like a graph like this. Um, and most of it is tied into our defense. You know how good our defense is. The, the first quarter, our defense was really, really good, and the second quarter was lousy. And why was it lousy? Well, our offense was lousy. So when you're not running any good offense, your, your defense is going to be lousy. And then the third quarter, our defense was great, and our offense was was creating things. So. Um, if our defense can stay consistent and create enough turnovers to get us transition baskets, that's the way we have to play. I think that's the way that this team can be the most successful. You know, grinding it out in the half court set, not exactly the, the best idea for us. Even though I thought we got a bunch of good sets, you know, in the third quarter. Um, you know, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 a struggle, no question about it. Um, and I hope that um, I hope that I hope that we can find it. Gino, just wanted to ask about Courtney was saying in her press conference. You guys shared a word before the game about just the injuries to both teams and how much of a different game we would have watched had both teams been fully healthy. Um, just tell me a little bit about what you guys talked about and how do you think the lack of depth on both sides playing out today? Anytime you're missing players, it's, a, it's an issue, but when you're missing, you know, really significant, impactful starters, um, it has a, it, it really has an effect on, on your team. We, we talked about how Every coach in America is dealing with this. You just hear about it more in Connecticut because of our profile and who these people are there. And at Carolina, you didn't hear about it. You don't hear about as much of it nationally. Uh, but every coach has gone through this all over the country. Um, I, I wish I had, you know, we talked about it, I wish coaches had an answer for why, but we don't. And, um, and unfortunately, the teams that you that you think you're going to be watching next week, next month, two months from now, may not look at all like they look today. And that's just part of the game right now. It's a big part of the game right now. You can mention that the communication was on high today. Did you also communication with what? High. It was, really, it was really good today. Did you also notice that? How important Not is that? between me and her. <laughs> How important is that to build consistency on the court? Uh, as I said, you can tell each quarter by looking at our stats. And even though the stats aren't always true, you can tell by what kind of communication we have, by how many points we score each quarter. So. Yeah, our communication was great in the third quarter, but not so great in the fourth quarter. And, and if that's, and, and if you want to be a really good team, it, that obviously can't happen on a regular basis. So, um, I do believe with all my heart that uh, God bless these kids. You know, they have a lot of great qualities not just my team, but I'm sure every team, they have a lot of great qualities.
communicating with each other is not one of them. And it's frustrating as hell to be honest. With you. And it makes coaching hard as hell. And it's um, it's an epidemic right now among college athletes. And hopefully you know, we can find a cure for it. Do you know the four guard offense, the sick ball seemed to move really well with it today. But of course with that comes the rebounding issues. What's your mix and match and do you you know, would you prefer to play it more? Um, you're hoping maybe Aubrey can get that consistency she needs to play that spot. How are you looking at the lineup so you do that? Well, we have to win the math battle, right? So they're probably going to get more rebounds than we are. We have to enforce more turnovers. We scored 15 more points from the three-point line than they did. And three more from the free throw line. That's 18-point differential between how many free throws we made and how many threes we made. We made. So if we can win that battle on a regular basis, I think we can stay with that small line. You know, if, uh, if we can generate more, more, more quickness and more aggressiveness offensively and defensively because we have more, more ways to play with that small lineup, um, then we can stay with it. I don't know that we can stay with it for 40 minutes every night, and I don't intend to. But, but knowing that we can do that, we need to be able to, I think, kind of mix and match as, as there are certain lineups that we have on the floor that are not awful. And sometimes you have to have them out there, and we couldn't win any games with that lineup. And there's certain lineups that are going to look great and it's going to flow, and the defense is going to work, the offense is going to work, the ball's going to move. Um, it's, another, it's another one that I don't have the answer to. Hi, Gina. Um, coming out of halftime, um, you guys got off to a great start in the third quarter. Did, did you uh, urge them at halftime to play you know, tougher defense, so they, they got off to a great start with KK with a couple steals and then you made them call a timeout. Um, I, I didn't know say much at that time, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm learning that talking doesn't really accomplish anything. Um, yeah, at some point, you know, the players realize we have to we have to pick up the intensity level defensively if we want to win tonight. We have to create if we want to win tonight. We, and you know what? That stuff is hard. So what you're asking them to do is really, really, really hard. And doing hard things on a regular basis, consistent basis. Um, it, it's a challenge, to say the least. So that third quarter, uh, they were inspired. Not by me, but something inspired them. Whatever that was. So, there you have it. Best I can know, help you. Coach, you, uh, speaking of the, the guard lineup, you brought Tanya Cardoza back to your staff this season. And, um, she's had a chance to be a head coach elsewhere. She was part of that 2004 coaching staff. Can you just talk about what she brings to the bench and how she's helped develop the guards this season? You know, Tanya now gives us three of our four assistants that have been head coaches. And See me and I as well have been, you know, where all the games that she's coached here. Um, I think 
once you've been a head coach and you come back to be an assistant, I think you have a different perspective on uh, what your role is and how you can help the team and how you can help the players. Uh, Tanya is a great teacher of the game. She has tremendous rapport uh, with the players. And to me, that's what that's what makes her so valuable, and that's what players players need. You know, they need coaches that can connect with them and work with them. And once the players know, hey, coach can make me better. I think that's that's the ultimate for for a coach when a kid believes in you that they can make you better. And Tiny has the ability to do that. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to have her back. And, but three head coaches, that means there's three more, three more chiefs in the kitchen. Which I don't mind, because they're wrong too, so thank you. <laughs>